Hello everyone! What is up with my voice? I don't know. So, as I mentioned in the last video where I Doors to Doomed, if you didn't see it, check it out. Um, I don't have internet right now where I am and so there's gonna be a bit of a lag in my vlog so I figured why not try to get some content up so it wouldn't be like a week of nothing or whatever because it's figuring out planes for mail and all that kind of jazz. So we're gonna come back with um, adventure book number two, uh, Flown the Koopa. So again, like I mentioned in the last video, these have been in my possession for a very long time but I also haven't done them for a very long time so who knows if Mario and Luigi will survive or if they will immediately die. That's the question. But yeah, it looks like KMX is going to be the jerk in this one. So I guess just let's uh, get into this. The first page just kind of tells you what's going to happen. And um, yeah, so let's set the scene. Magic menace. So snarls Magikoopa. You plumbers know some tricks of your own. Sure, says Luigi, stepping forward. Do you have a deck of cards? Silence, fool, shrieks the giant turtle. Quickly, he reaches into his robes and pulls out a handful of old dry bones. He flings them in front of the plumbers. Fork, knife, come to life, he chants. The bones begin to swirl around as if trapped in a miniature tornado. Then they suddenly organize themselves into two huge turtle skeletons. Dry bones, oh no, moans Mario. The horrible bone monsters storm towards Mario and Luigi. Smash them, ordered the magician. What will happen to the plumbers now? It's up to you to make the decisions that will get them through this fiendishly fun adventure. And then we just go into the title page. And then this page tells you how to play, tells you like collecting goods and stuff. And there are often puzzles and stuff in it, so I will show you those when we get there. I tried filming it so you could just see the page the whole time, but one, it kind of gives away because you can see, oh, on page whatever, there's a game over. And two, it's very hard to read when you're reading kind of through a camera. But yeah, let's just get into this adventure. Fingers crossed they survive. The cookies are done, sings Toad, the royal mushroom retainer. He gallops along the deck of the royal cruise ship, carrying a tremendous tray of fresh baked chocolate chip treats. The cookies are done, get your red hot up. Slipping on the SS Morlitania's red shag carpeting, ew. He stumbles forward and falls headfirst down a small flight of stairs. Cookies scatter in every direction as Toad lands with a thud. Princess Toadstool and the Super Mario Bros rush to help poor Toad. But then Luigi is distracted by the sight of his friend Yoshi making a dash for the cookies. Hey, no fair, shouts Luigi, as Yoshi scoops up two dozen cookies with the lap of his tongue. The six-foot-tall baby dinosaur sticks out a slender green arm and snatches five more cookies. Those were mine, whines the tall, skinny plumber. He stomps around the cabin angrily, picking up any crumbs he can find. Relax, little brother, says Mario. I'm sure Toad will bake some more. He picks Toad's polka dot hat up off the cabin floor and places it gently on the stunned mushroom retainer's head, as soon as he recovers from his fall, that is. What happened? asked Toad, gazing blankly at Mario and Princess Toadstool. You just had a little mishap, the princess informs him. Don't you remember? She pauses to straighten her emerald medallion. You fell when you were running with the cookies. Cookies? Toad says curiously. He gazes around the lavishly decorated ship's cabin. He looks up and studies the large chandelier hanging from the center of the ceiling. Then he stares directly into the princess's blue-gray eyes. Who are you? he asks dully. Oh no, howls Mario. He's blowing out his memory. The super plumber takes off his cap and runs one hand through his bushy hair. Luigi looks around the cabin nervously. Who's going to bake more cookies, he asks. Meanwhile, two flights above on the SS Moraltania's control deck, the Mushroom King is hard at work steering the ship towards Dinosaur Island, where the International Dino Flying Derby is about to begin. Seven hours ago, the ship left its dock at Mushroom Kingdom. The king pressed the automatic pilot button and hasn't taken his eyes off the big red switch ever since. Boy, he remarks, shoving back his gold and purple crown. This is even tougher than ruling the Mushroom Kingdom. Everything seems to be running smoothly. The chief mushroom assistant, Wooster, is back home at the castle, making sure everything stays neat and clean. The Super Mario Bros are with the royal party in case anything goes wrong. Everyone already has their tickets for the derby, so there shouldn't be any trouble getting in to see the show. The princess is even passing out spending money to everyone so they can buy popcorn at the derby. And if the derby is anything like all the posters say it will be, the royal party is going to have a wild time. Yes siree, the king says to himself, for once, everything is under control. Then it says, the plumber have a pair of tickets and ten gold coins. Turn to page 93. So, 
I'm gonna mark that down because you never know when we need to know what we have. 10 coins. Alrighty, page 93. Land ho! The king bellows through the ship's intercom. We'll be arriving at Dinosaur Island in 60. Wham! The ship lurches to a halt, flinging everyone across the room. What happened? asked Princess Toadstool as her father stumbles down the ship's st spiral staircase. I have no idea, the Mushroom King answers, but we seem to have run aground. But all the controls said that we were still a mile from the shore. Hmm, Mario grumbles, getting up from the boat. I could have docked this boat, no problem. Did I ever tell you the time that I managed to float on a giant sponge all the way across Lake Ontario during a... We'd all love to hear your story, the princess interrupts. But I've got to get Yoshi to the derby grounds in time to register for the events. She walks across the cabin, pats the round-faced dinosaur on the chin, and feeds him a chocolate chip cookie. He's the two-to-one favorite in the two-legged long jump, you know. Princess Toadstool and Yoshi head toward the exit plank at the far side of the cabin. Wish us luck, she cries, waving. See you after the derby. And then they head down the plank and are gone. Soon, Mario and the king have shut down all the ship's engines and are ready to head to the festival, too. Let's go, guys, Mario calls to the others. Just a minute, shouts Luigi. Toad still hasn't come to his senses, so the younger plumber has been busy drilling him on the basics. This is a wrench, says Luigi, holding up a shiny brass plumbing tool. Wrench, Toad repeats dully. This is a cookie, says Luigi. He shows the mushroom retainer one of the chocolate chips he managed to retrieve. If you find any, give them to me. Finally, the rest of the group gathers at the exit plank and heads down to the banks of Dinosaur Island. Just to be on the safe side, Mario grabs a piece of emergency equipment at the last minute. You never know when trouble might surface, he says seriously. Good thinking, big bro, says Luigi. Now let's go to the show. Now we have a puzzle here. It says solve this puzzle for a clue about which piece of equipment the plumber should take. Examine these bag of cookies, then choose the bag that should go next. So... I'm gonna take a second to figure out which one goes next, and then I will let you know what we're taking. All right, this was kind of stressful, but I'm gonna go with bag C because the it's obviously one that goes in a T like this, and the other ones that go up and down don't have any repeating patterns, so if I went with A, that'd be a repeating pattern, so I'm gonna go with C. So it says, if I think bag C is correct, do not take the flashlight. So I guess that means I am taking a fire flower and a feather. And I hope I don't end up anywhere dark because that could be problematic. And now we're going to page 37. Mario, Luigi, the King, and Toad begin to wind through the swampy terrain of Dinosaur Island. They follow makeshift handwritten signs that say, this way to dino flying derby, zigzagging past bubbling tar pits and steaming lava flows. Stay on the path, everyone, Mario advises. He takes his emergency plumber out of his back pocket and uses it to beat back a couple of evil, pokey cacti plants that are attempting to slide onto the trail. As they continue onward past herds of barking triceratopses and flocks of other dinosaurs, a strange rumbling begins to fill the air. What's that? asks the king. I think it's my stomach, says Luigi. Yoshi got most of the cookies, and I'm... Be quiet, little brother, Mario advises. All four heroes turn and look behind them. Luigi's stomach isn't what was causing the rumbling. Instead, a giant herd of rhinoceros-like dinosaurs are charging up the path towards them. Dino rhinos, shout the plumbers. Everyone jump to the side, commands Mario. Or get squishified, Luigi adds. Solve this puzzle to find out what happens next. This herd of dino rhinos is about to charge and flatten everything on the path. Can you decide which bush is safe from the stampeding monsters? Study the back of each beast. The number next to each arrow will tell you how many spaces it will move in each direction before switching to the next arrow. If you think bush A is safe, turn to page 43. If you think bush B is safe, turn to page 26. So we got another puzzle here. So they say right here what they move. So I need to figure out if B or A is safe. Give me a minute. Okay, so that was pretty easy. This this buddy here is just gonna go over and trample Bush B immediately, so Bush B is not safe. I did double check, Bush A is safe, so Bush A safe, turn to page 46. Rumble, the pack of six stampeding dino rhinos charges straight up the narrow dirt path. Just in time, all four heroes dive out of the way. Luigi and Toad land in a patch of pale blue swamp moss to the left of the trail. Mario grabs the king by his purple velvet collar and yanks him to the right just missing a hungry piranha plant sapling. The bulky monsters blast past, leaving behind a trail of dust, loose dirt clods, and some small round objects. Cookies, Toad asks, pointing to the shiny coins scattered across the path. No, says Luigi, but those are great too. 
Quickly, he and his brother gather all of the coins. It's a good thing those rhinos charged just then, says Mario, pocketing his share of money, so we won't have to charge anything later. Climbing back onto the trail, they continue on their way, following the signs for the festival. The plumbers collect 15 coins. Doing all right. We got 25 coins now. And we're not dead. That's a win too. So turn to page 113. Soon, the four heroes reach an open valley with a large fenced-in area in the middle. Over the top of the wide wooden fence, they can see the upper half of an enormous circus tent. Various squawks, hoots, grunts, and other dinosaur noises drift faintly to their ears. This must be the place, says Mario. Good, says Luigi. He takes a big sniff of the air. I smell popcorn. Tickets, please, says a large green guard blocking a space in the wooden wall. A patch on one of his muscular armored arms says, Derby Security. The king takes two tickets from the pocket in his royal robe and hands them to the guard. Immediately, the big usher shoves him and Toad through the entrance. Ouch, says the king. You don't have to be so pushy. He and Toad disappear inside. Well, asks the guard, glaring at Mario and Luigi. Do you have your two tickets or do I have to get rough? If the plumbers have the tickets, turn to page 55. If they do not, turn to page 70. But we did get the tickets from the princess first thing, so we're going to page 55. Mario takes a pair of tickets out of his overalls pockets and hands them to the grumpy green guard. Oh, the guard mutters, sounding even more irritated. He drops the two passes into his bucket. You did have tickets after all. They must be letting everyone into this thing nowadays. He steps to one side. Geez, what a grouch, says Luigi as they enter. Inside, the two plumbers are sadly disappointed. There are nowhere near three dozen exciting attractions as the advertisements had promised. Instead, a handful of rickety rides are scattered about the area. Many of them aren't even running, and almost all the light bulbs seem to be burnt out. Off to one side, a crummy little Ferris wheel stands still. Apparently, no one even bothered to plug it in. There are no cotton candy machines, there is no orchestra, there is only a small popcorn tent and one big circus tent in the center of the field and only two or three dozen people have showed up to see the derby at all. This seems suspicious. Boy, said Mario as he and Luigi wander into the big tent. What a cheesy festival. Don't say that word, snaps Luigi. I'm hungry. Inside, the International Dino Flying Derby turns out to be even crummier. Again, most of the light bulbs in the area are flickering weakly, and in the stands, most of the audience seem to be made up of Koopa Troopas, Mega Moles, and other dangerous creatures. Are you sure this place is safe, asked Mario, sitting down next to the king. I hope no one tries to steal my jewel-encrusted sandals, says the mushroom monarch, but none of the monsters seem to notice him. Instead, all eyes are upon a skinny reptile in the tattered top now standing in the center of the tent. Ladies and gentlemen, wheezes the creature, here we go! Slowly, a few sickly dinosaurs begin to make their way onto center stage. One by one, they flap their wings and lift themselves off the ground for a few seconds. A couple of the monsters in the audience clap their hands once or twice. Geez, says Luigi. This is really thrilling. He stands up from his uncomfortable wooden bench. Can I go get some popcorn? I'm not sure we have enough money, Mario answers. But if you do go, be sure to come right back. Yoshi and the princess are supposed to be competing, and I don't see them anywhere. We might have to do some instant investigation. If the plumbers have 15 or more coins, turn to page 7. If they have fewer than 15, turn to page 118. But we have 25, so we're doing all right. Luigi counts his money carefully and is pleased to find that he has more than enough. Eagerly, he bounces up to the shabby wooden snack stand. That'll be five coins, sir, says the wiry red and blue haired turtle at the popcorn stand. Let me, let me take off five here. The attendant hands him an empty paper bag. Hey, shouts Luigi, glaring at the weightless package in his hand. There's nothing in this thing. Hmm, says the turtle. I could check to see if that's really true, but it'll cost you another five coins. What, Luigi screams? Five? That's highway robbery. It really is. After standing there scowling at the attendant for three whole minutes, however, his stomach starts to rumble. Okay, okay, Luigi says, handing the attendant five more coins and the empty bag. You're right, says the skinny turtle. He studies the paper bag thoughtfully. I guess you must have bought a bag of air by mistake. Huh, says Luigi. I didn't. I'll tell you what the weasel-faced turtle suggests, planting one greasy paw on the plumber's shoulder. Give me five more coins and I'll fill your bag with popcorn. Absolutely free. Well, geez, Luigi scratches his head. I guess that sounds like a good deal. Trudging back to his seat in the big tent, Luigi notices that the popcorn is extremely stale. He shoves the uneaten bag in his pocket and wonders if he should have bought some pretzels instead. The plumbers now have a bag of popcorn, but they lose 15 coins. Rude. 
I still got 10 though. Turn to page 118. So we're ending up in the same spot. So at least, you know, that wouldn't have been immediate death, I guess. Disappointed, confused, and hungrier than ever, Luigi sits back down next to his brother. Just then, an out of tune three piece band plays two broken chords and stops. And now the master of the ceremony cries, the main event! Five flabby dinosaurs charge out from behind a stack of cardboard boxes and run around the tent once. The winner! shouts the MC, holding up one of the creature's paws. Now everyone can go home! That's it? asked Mario. What happened to the flying part? Where is Yoshi? asked the king. Where am I? asks Toad. Meanwhile, the rest of the audience has begun to file over the tent. Mario notices that several large mega moles are looking at him and his friends hungrily. Off in one corner, a cluster of Koopa Troopas are waving knives and forks and pointing at Toad. Something else is odd, boys, the Mushroom King remarks, not noticing the monsters nearby. I bought this light up yo-yo on the way in, and it's acting most peculiar. He dangles the electric toy at the end of its string. Mysteriously, it flickers on and off in a strange pattern. I don't know what it means, your highness, says Mario, but you and Toad had better get back to the ship. He cracks his knuckles. I've got a hunch things are about to get rough around here. Yeah, said Luigi. We'll find your daughter in Yoshi and we'll meet you there soon. Leading Toad by one hand, the king heads away from the fairgrounds, leaving the two plumbers alone to investigate. I've got a funny feeling that we're going to have to rescue somebody again, muses Mario. Turn to page 63. While the two plumbers are still standing in the tent, several reptilian workers take down the big top. Within minutes, everything has been packed up. Now what? asks Mario. Maybe we should make tracks, says Luigi. Wait a minute, says Mario. Take a look at these tracks. Pressed into the muddy ground is a trail of dinosaur footprints. There are far too many of them to have come from the few pathetic creatures in the festival. Let's go, Mario commands. He and his brother begin to follow the three toad prints. After a few yards, however, the tracks split in two separate directions. One trail leads down a hill and into a steamy swamp. The other winds up on Dinosaur Island's desert. Ooh, Luigi begins to sing. You take the high road, I'll take the low road, and I'll knock it off, shouts Mario. I think we'd better stick together. Yeah, says Luigi, I guess you're right. Okay, okay, snaps Mario. Just help me decide which way we should go next. Solve the puzzle to help decide which way Mario and Luigi should go. Here's how the dinosaur footprints begin. Can you figure out what print will come next? So there it is. Give me two seconds and I will let you know which way we're going. Okay, I might be leading them to their death, but here, here's my thought, my thought process. Here's my thought process. So the ones, like the bird ones go pattern three, three, five, four, five, three, three. And the other ones go four, five, three, three, five, four. If I shift that back, so that it matches up with the pattern for the threes, it should be five next, which would mean B. So we're gonna go to page 51 and hope for the best. We should definitely go this way, Mario says, pointing. He and Luigi follow the dinosaur tracks into the desert. As they continue, however, the whole scene begins to take on a sense of familiarity. It also begins to take on a truly unpleasant odor. Ugh, Mario says, wrinkling his nose at the smell of moldy cheese and rotting vegetable peels. We must be getting near the Valley of the Koopas. Sure enough, a wooden arrow-shaped sign says, Koopa Valley dead ahead. Dead a body too, if you're not careful. Sitting on a rusty dented trash can nearby is Bowser Koopa, king of the wicked monster turtles that infest the Mushroom Kingdom and lately Dinosaur Island. He's busy using a rusty metal file to scuff up his fingernails. Mario and Luigi trudge up to him through the dirty yellow sand. What do you plumbers want? He snarls. We're looking for Yoshi and Princess Toadstool, says Luigi. Never heard of him, snaps Bowser. Now go away, I'm busy. The two plumbers look at him suspiciously for a moment. Then they wave their pinkies at each other three times. That's the secret plumber hand signal for I think the giant turtle is lying. What's in the can? asks Mario. Nothing for you, growls the evil turtle king. And you have just ten seconds to get out of here. You're both in big trouble. Ten, nine, eight... Five, four, three, one, too late. Before Mario and Luigi have a chance to correct Bowser's math, the giant turtle lifts the lid off the rusty trash can and dumps out four hideous whirling robot monsters. They look a bit like dinosaurs, but also a bit like lawnmowers. These are three of my mecha Koopas, laughs Bowser. Once again, the plumbers have no time to correct the evil turtle's counting. Steadily, the monsters grind towards them, whirling and flailing their razor-sharp claws. Got another puzzle. Solve this puzzle to find out what happens next. Bowser has built an army of Mecha Koopas. If Mario and Luigi can figure out how the robots are put together, they'll have a better idea of how to fight them. Can you tell which parts Bowser used? Here's a complete Mecha Koopa. So, give me a second. All right, so, 
I'm going with A because B has two of these hair pieces and he doesn't have two hair pieces. First thing I did was count how many pieces and I noticed there was discrepancy. So we're going with A. If you think he used group A, turn to page 100. Whirling and buzzing, the first Mecha Koopas charge up to Luigi. Calmly, the younger plumber takes out his heavy brass monkey wrench and, striking a few strategic blows, smashes the monster into several pieces. Meanwhile, the three other electronic fiends have surrounded Mario. The monsters are too slow to grab him, but he can't escape from them either. Then, Luigi glances over and notices that Bowser is holding a small object in one hand. What's that? shouts Luigi, racing up to the giant turtle. Ah, uh, nothing, says Bowser. He quickly puts his hand behind his back. I wouldn't have done that if I were you, says Luigi cheerfully. With one great swing of his wrench, he belts the giant turtle in the stomach. Bowser howls in pain, drops the strange object on the ground, and runs off. Come back here, you coward, shouts Luigi, waving his wrench fiercely. He then bends over and picks up the strange object. It's a remote control, he notes. Let's see what it can do. Mario is still busy fending off the other three Mecha Koopas, but when Luigi points the device at them and presses one of its buttons, the creatures stop dead in their tracks. How did you manage that? asks Mario, panting heavily. With this little doohickey, says Luigi. I push the off button. He twirls his bushy black mustache thoughtfully. Now let's see what happens if I press button 28. What's 28? asks Mario. The All Sports Channel, Luigi answers. He aims the remote at the frozen creatures and presses the button. Sure enough, they spring into action. One mechanical monster reaches out with its iron hand and rips off another one's head. Then the two intact creatures begin playing a clanky, whirling round of volleyball using the loose head on a ball. Personally, I prefer soccer, says Mario, bending over to pick up a few loose coins that the metal monsters have scattered on the ground. Luigi hands Mario the remote control. Then the two of them turn back out of the desert valley and begin to follow the trail of dinosaur tracks into the swamp. The plumbers now have a remote control and they collect 10 coins. We're doing well. We're, we're getting more money and we're collecting things. This way, Luigi says confidently, the two plumbers follow the trail of dinosaur tracks that lead down the slippery, marshy hillside. Watch your step, little brother, Mario calls to Luigi, who is several yards ahead of him. The ground looks very sli- He falls forward onto the ground. Luigi bounces back towards him and helps him up. What did you say, he asks? Never mind, grumbles Mario. I think I see something up ahead. At the bottom of the hill, a weird collection of granite statues are spread out through the steamy, swampy area. Most of the images are strange monsters that Mario and Luigi have never seen before, but one or two look oddly familiar. Wait a minute, shouts Luigi as he examines one of the strange granite blocks. That is no unidentifiable statue. It's Yoshi! Sure enough, the six-foot-tall dinosaur has been petrified. He's been frozen into a solid block of stone with a terrifying expression on his face. It looks like he was running from something, says Mario. Don't worry, pal, says Luigi, patting the stone dinosaur on his muzzle. We'll get you back to normal. He then spots a bag of cookies at Yoshi's feet. I don't suppose you'll be needing these for a while, Luigi says, and pockets the chocolate chip treats. Over here, shouts Mario. A few feet beyond Yoshi is a stone statue of a pretty young girl with curly hair dressed in a formal ball gown. Her tiara is tilted back and her right leg is stretched forward as if she too is running from something. Princess Toadstool, gasps Luigi. Then, over the princess's shoulder, he spots an eerie yellow light. About a quarter of a mile away, the windows of a dark fortress glow through steamy wisps of swamp gas. His brother sees it too. Come on, Luigi, says Mario grimly. Silently, the plumbers begin to march towards the hulking, dark building. Turn to page 50. The plumbers wade through the ponds and puddles, dodging muncher plants and brushing away swarms of marsh bugs. Eventually, they reach the mysterious fortress. There's no way in, sighs Luigi, studying the fort's high stone walls. I doubt that, says Mario. Finding a way in is usually not a big problem. Let's just hope there's a way out. Carefully, the plumbers walk around the entire fortress, studying the smooth rock walls, but there don't seem to be any gaps. Hmm, Mario ponders. These walls look too steep to climb, but there's just got to be some way to get to the other side. If the plumbers have the magic feather, turn to page 115. If they do not, turn to page 103. And I do. So we're going to page 115. Hey, shouts Luigi. Didn't you bring the magic feather along? Good thinking, little brother, says Mario. He reaches into his overall pocket and takes out the magical item that he grabbed just before leaving the ship. Instantly, he energizes and a magic cape appears, stuck to his bright red overalls. Filled with super energy, he grabs his brother by the collar and brings him soaring into the air. Soon they are higher than the fortress walls and on their way to the other side. Hedgehog, bulldog, bicycle tire, a raspy voice murmurs from below them. Hit them with a red-hot ball of fire! Did you say something, little brother? asks Mario. 
Vroom! A blazing fireball shoots past the plumbers, nearly setting their shoelaces aflame. Yikes, they both shout. Far below, leaning out of one of the fortress windows, a giant turtle wearing a pointy magician's cap is peering at them. Soap dish, tuna fish, alligator hen, the creature shrieks. Bless those plumbers once again! He ducks his head until the tip of his pointy hat is aimed at the plumbers. With a whoosh, out shoots a fireball, heading straight for the Mario Brothers. We're out of here, shouts Mario. He grabs onto his brother's arm tightly and zooms into a steep dive. Solve this puzzle to find out what happens next. If the plumbers know where the danger is, they'll be able to avoid it. You can help them. Study this stream of fireballs carefully and try to choose what magical plast is going to come next. So, give me a second. <laughs> All right, so again, based on the pattern, it goes four, six, six, four, six, six, so it should be four. I'm assuming that's the way it's going, like there, and not like which one's coming out of his wand next. Oh, I just lost that page. Um, so, oh, there we go. So I'm gonna go with B is coming next, which is turn to page 54. Foosh, foosh. Two more fireballs sail after Mario and Luigi, one after the other. Not even close. Take us down, shouts Luigi. Right you are, answers Mario. Before the creepy magician can do anything else to bother the plumbers, they have landed softly on the ground inside the fortress. I'm glad that guy's gone, said Luigi, looking up at the towering stone walls. I'm not so sure, re Mario replies. Creeps like that usually tend to show up later on in an adventure. Side by side, the plumbers march into the courtyard. Turn to page 80. Wow, says Mario as he gazes about the courtyard. From wall to wall, the entire area is filled with a giant maze. Some of the barriers are made of stone. Others are carved out of wood or thick green hedges. They are at least 10 feet tall. Amazing, says Luigi. <laughs> that was so funny, I forgot to laugh, grumbled Mario. The plumbers decide to start by following the line of plodding dinosaurs into the labyrinth, but in a very short time, the line split into several confused lines. Soon, Mario and Luigi are walking by themselves near the middle of the Great Maze. You know, Mario observes, it never really feels like we've had an adventure until we've wasted a bunch of time wandering around in one of these things. If the plumbers have the popcorn, which we do, turn to page 20. If they don't, turn to page 110. So to page 20 it is. Luigi stops in his tracks. He grabs his brother by the arm. Popcorn, he shouts. Oh, come on, moans Mario. We're lost in a maze and all you can think of is eating. Annoyed, he begins to trudge down the lane, away from his younger brother. No, says Luigi cheerfully. We can use the popcorn to mark a trail. Then we'll know if we've traveled on any of these paths already. Great idea, says Mario, taking out the paper bag containing the popcorn. If I didn't know better, I'd swear you were a genius. He slaps Luigi on the back. Gee, thanks a lot, Luigi says sarcastically. Scattering popcorn as they go, the plumbers soon make great progress into the heart of the labyrinth. Just one thing, Luigi adds. If we run out of popcorn, don't even think about using my cookies. A few minutes later, Mario and Luigi have made their way to the very center of the maze. Turn to page 31. We're doing pretty good, guys. We're doing pretty good. This is it, Mario asks as he and his brother look around them. In the heart of the maze is a small yard, about 20 feet across. And in the center of that clearing stands a small stone hut, about 8 feet wide. Cautiously, the two brothers tiptoe into the small dark shack. Inside, they find nothing but one long, torch-lit staircase. Without pausing, they head down into the dim, mysterious depth. I feel funny, says Luigi, walking a few feet behind his brother. Ugh, says Mario, do you really have to tell jokes right now? I'm not. When he turns to look at his brother, though, he stops in his track. Luigi's hair is standing straight up. His mustache is fanned out like a bushy black porcupine. Must be a lot of static electricity in the air or something, says Luigi. The tall, skinny plumber struggles to stuff all his hair back under his green cap. After a few seconds, however, he gives up. They continue on their way. They descend deeper and deeper into the earth. Finally, the staircase ends and the Mario Bros head down an enormous stone hallway. Where exactly are we headed, asks Luigi, after about 15 minutes of marching and marching past torches and nothing else. We're going to find out who turned the princess and Yoshi into stone, Mario says with determination. He straightens his red plumber's cap and adjusts the straps on his overalls. And then we're going to get our money back from that crummy festival, he adds. Just then, a block of stones drops from the ceiling. Mario dives backwards just in time to avoid being squished into a big flat plumber pancake. Jumping to his feet, he peers down at the stone block. It leers back up at him out of tiny knowing eyes. Thwomp trap, Mario gasps. Luigi studies the course ahead of them. In order to continue, the plumbers will have to dodge several medium-sized falling stone thwomp traps and a giant thwomp smasher. Good, he said. I was beginning to get a little bored. Solve the puzzle to find out what happens next. One of the ropes will lower a bridge so the plumbers can get through the obstacle course. The other will drop a 10-ton thwomp on top of them. Which rope should they pull? There is the puzzle. 
Give me a second. It's very much B. A drops that thwomp. So we're gonna go with B. Now I'm like second guessing. No, definitely B. So we're going to page 48. With a hop, skip, and a jump, Mario crosses the lowered bridge and dives under the first stone booby trap. Wham! The thwomp crashes to the ground. Too late. Rrr, it growls furiously. When it's down, Luigi vaults over it. That's one, laughs Mario. The next two prove just as easy. The plumbers make it pass without a scratch, but the last one is too big to beat that way. The giant swamp is the only thing that stands between us and, well, more hallways, I guess, says Mario. He eyes the glowing stone monster. Then he sighs. What's wrong, big bro, asks Luigi. We need a decoy. Mario sighs again. Shut your eyes, Luigi. This is going to hurt. He advises sadly. Then he reaches for Luigi's cookies. What? No way, yells Luigi. No one's gonna swamp my cookies. Mario grabs the bag. Luigi jumps back. His fingers catch in Mario's pocket. Rip! Ah! Screams Mario as a shower of golden coins slice out of his twirling pocket. Several roll under the thwomp trap. Thwomp! My coins! Moans Mario. Go! Shrieks Luigi. He shoves Mario over the trap while it's still down. My coins! Wails the stricken Mario. My... He stops short and his eyes open wide with joy. Coins! There at the plumber's feet are hundreds of coins. Most of them have been stomped completely flat by the thwomp over many years and are of no use to anyone. But Mario sifts through the flattened discs and picked out a few that have survived the pounding. Then he and Luigi press down the torch-lit static electricity charged hall. The plumbers lose 20 coins but collect 30 more. They gain 10 coins. Ooh, we got 30 coins total. Turn to page 89. Soon the flaming torches that line the walls are gone. Instead, large candles shed a golden light on the stones that lie ahead. As Mario and Luigi go forward, each set of the candles is smaller than the one before. Eventually, the only candles left are the size of pins. The heroes can barely see two feet in front of them. Suddenly, the hallway ends. The only way to go is down. A steep staircase descends into a pitch black opening below. Scary, says Luigi. I'm not afraid of the dark, says Mario, peering into the void. He shivers, but in this case, I'll make an exception. If the plumbers have a flashlight, turn to page 15. If they don't have the flashlight, turn to page 98. We don't have the flashlight, guys. <laughs> and by 98, I meant 96. Not that it super matters. Why don't we bring a flashlight, mutters Mario irritably. He leans against one of the stone walls and tries to decide if they should risk walking down the stairs into total darkness. Suddenly, the wall behind him gives way. Luigi shouts, it's a secret passage. Eagerly, the two plumbers shove the same stone with all their might. The entire wall swings inward with a crack. Wasting no time, they step through the opening. The air fills with a faint electronic hum as the huge round room spreads out before the plumbers. The ceiling is three stories high, except for a few strange objects in the very center of the room. Every table, every corner, every space on every wall is lined with rows and rows of books. It's a library, gasped Luigi. It's my library, snaps a screechy, high-pitched voice. A tall, gaunt turtle in a velvet cape slinks towards the plumbers. It's Magikoopa, Bowser Koopa's third cousin twice removed. His long black fingernails reach out menacingly. And I don't recall inviting either of you, he snarls. The giant, awful turtle adjusts his pointy velvet hat and begins to wave a twisted magic wand at Mario and Luigi. Turn to page 85. Magikoopa lifts his wand and starts to chant, Soup, bone, telephone, alligator, skunk. Wait, shouts Mario. We only came here to, uh, borrow some books. You did? The turtle magician asks. He fiddles with two of the three black hairs on the end of his chin thoughtfully. Well, I'm using all of them right now. You're reading all the books at once, asks Luigi. Read? Who said anything about reading, snarls Magikoopa. I use them as fuel for my electric generator. That's how I can make enough power to run my TV set. The turtle steps to one side, revealing a giant television console. Affectionately, he rubs one of his giant green paws along the top of the box. Someday I'll have cable TV down here. I'll be able to watch hundreds of channels, he continues. But until then, I have to make my own shows. Just then, a small confused dinosaur stumbles into the other side of the room. Immediately, Magikoopa points his wand at the poor creature and shouts, Bathtub sink! Dinosaur shrink! A bolt of blue energy leaps from the wand. The dinosaur shrinks down to the size of an apple. Before the dinosaur can react, the giant turtle steps forward and he grabs him with one hand. Then he lifts up a small flap on the top of the TV set and drops him inside. Right now, I'm watching a documentary about prehistoric life, he says. I see, says Mario, standing on his tiptoes. Inside the TV, the minuscule dinosaur is running around in circles, letting out tiny cries of fright. You do, eh? croaks Magikoopa. That's too bad. Your noisy friends tried to stop me from using dinosaurs, so I had to turn them into statues. 
That's what I'd do to anyone who won't cooperate. He laughs as he straightens his cone-shaped hat. But I've got bigger, uh, smaller plans for you too. He whirls around and waves his wand a few inches in front of Mario and Luigi's noses. Surfboard, landlord, underwear, dice! Make these plumbers the size of... Uh-oh, says Luigi. Solve this puzzle to find out what happens next. There's a secret message hidden in the section of Magikoopa's library. Arrange all the books alphabetically, then read the last letter in each book's title and you'll find some important advice for the plumbers. So, there that is. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back and the secret hint is leap sideways. So, if I think the plumbers should stay where they are, turn to page 72. No. If I think that they should dive out of the way, go to page 36. No way, shouts Mario. Before the magician can finish his chant, the plumbers dive to one side. Then they race towards the exit on the other side of the library. Kangaroo bear over there, shrieks Magikoopa. In a flash, the giant turtle vanishes. Instantly, he reappears in front of Mario and Luigi, blocking their path. Now where was I, he chortles. Oh yes, tube sock alarm clock, oatmeal sneeze. Hit these plumbers with a deep, deep freeze. A giant snowball appears at the end of Magikoopa's wand. It hovers there for a moment, then it flies towards the plumbers. If Mario and Luigi have the fire flower, turn to page 77. If they do not, turn to page 92. But we do. Maybe it wasn't so bad not having that flashlight. Of course, if we had the flashlight, we probably wouldn't be in the situation, but that's fine. Just in time, Mario reaches into his pocket and takes out the fire flower he picked up on the way out of the ship. Instantly, he feels his body getting warmer. The moment he's fully charged, he spits. A fireball shoots out of the plumber's mouth and slams into the giant snowball a few feet away. With a loud hiss, both balls evaporate into a wisp of steam. Spitting is a bad habit, big brother, says Luigi, but I guess it's okay to do right now. So, snarls Magikoopa, you know some tricks of your own. Sure, says Luigi, stepping forward. Do you have a deck of cards? Silence, fool, shrieks the giant turtle. Quickly, he reaches into his robe and pulls out a handful of old dry bones. He flings them in front of the plumbers. Fork, knife, come to life. Ooh, we've seen this before. The bones begin to swirl around, as if trapped in a miniature tornado. Then they suddenly organize themselves into two huge turtle skeletons. Dry bones, oh no, moans Luigi. Smash them, orders Magikoopa. The horrible bone monsters stomp towards Mario and Luigi. What do you say, big brother, whispers Luigi. Can we handle these boneheads? Solve the puzzle to find out what happens next. Mario and Luigi need to know what they're up against. Can you tell which skeleton is heavier? Use the chart at the bottom to find out how much each bone weighs. So there's the chart, here's the skeleton dudes, and now I need to do some math, so I guess I'll be back. Alrighty, so if I did the math right, and that could be debatable, skeleton number A weighs 129 pounds, and this guy weighs 146. So we're gonna go with B is heavier, and just, um, I hope for the best, I guess. Page 34. Mario and Luigi do some quick plumometry on their fingers. Then they exchange glances. That was not quick. That was like a lot. That was a lot of math. Too heavy, they exclaim together. The plumbers don't wait to see what the evil skeletons do next. They take off running. Where are we going, asks Luigi, a few feet behind his brother. Trust me, says Mario. He races to the wall on the other side of the library, with the bony monsters just a few feet behind them. Just as they are about to grab him, he opens a door marked Broom Closet and ducks down. The skeletons go flying over Mario's head and land inside the closet. Quickly, the plumber shuts the door and locks it. Grrr, snarls Magikoopa. Everyone always uses that trick. You'd think you'd get rid of that closet. Then, before the plumbers can catch their breath, he waves his wand again. Six, eight, ten, blast again! Two more blue fireballs zoom across the room. One hits Mario in the chest. He falls to the ground unconscious. Luigi barely manages to dive out of the way. He lands sideways on the library's tile floor with a loud crunch. My cookies! The plumber screams. You made me crush my cookies! His eyes narrow to two furious slits. Now it's personal, he says in a menacing whisper. Luigi charges up to the evil turtle. He punches him on the beak so hard that the magician's hat goes flying across the room. Magikoopa steps backwards and stands there, stunned for a moment. Then he lifts his left foot out of his leathery boot and wiggles his big toe at the plumber. Seaweed, pumpkin, seed, telescope, snow, he crows. Instantly, the entire library flashes with blue light. Turn to page 58. Suddenly, Magikoopa is towering high above Luigi's head. You got bigger, gasps the plumber, stepping backwards. Guess again, laughs the evil magician. Luigi stumbles over a crack between the floor tiles. The gap is up to his waist. I've been shrunk, he wails. The turtle reaches down with his huge slimy paws and tries to grab the plumber, but Luigi dives out of the way. Magikoopa picks up his empty shoe and begins to pound it on the floor to squash him, but Luigi is too quick. 
He dodges the giant slamming shoe and runs into the space underneath the magician's television set. Come out of there, grunts the turtle. He crouches down and tries to reach Luigi, but his hands are too big to fit under the TV. Come out of there right now. No way, shouts Luigi. Behind Magic Koopa, he can see that Mario is still out cold. He also notices the sorcerer's magic hat is lying on the ground only a few inches from the TV. Boy, Luigi mutters. If I could get to that, then you'd see some fireworks. Unfortunately, when you're the size of a prune, a few inches can seem like miles. Solve the puzzle in the next page for advice. Look carefully at Magic Koopa's hat. There's a secret message on it. Just follow the three guidelines below and you'll get a clue about what Luigi should do next. Change the letters inside the triangles to O. Cross out all the letters inside stars. Read everything backwards. There's the hat. You know what's gonna happen. <laughs> that one actually went a lot faster than I thought. It says, don't touch it. So we're not gonna touch it, which means we should stay put and go to page four. I honestly thought this would be over by now, but you know, we're, we're, we're still doing it. Luigi stays where he is. No matter how hard the magician tries, he can't reach him. Ah, growls Magic Koopa. Luigi can hear his voice echoing high overhead. There's more than one way to sink a plumber. Suddenly there's a flash of blue light. Magic Koopa appears on the floor in front of the startled plumber. He's shrunk himself too. Now I've got you, the turtle screams. Luigi darts from underneath the TV and begins to climb up the side of the set. By the time he reaches the top though, Magic Koopa is right behind him and gaining fast. Geronimo, shouts Luigi. He dives into the opening at the top of the TV. If the plumbers have the remote control, turn to page 61. If they do not, turn to page 69. But we do. The turtle magician dives into the TV and begins to chase Mario around inside the set. Help, help, Luigi screams as the turtle closes in on him. Mario, wake up. Across the room on the library floor, Mario opens his eyes. He spies the bizarre scene inside the television. Magic Koopa has grabbed Luigi by the throat. Wasting no time, Mario reaches into his overall pockets and takes up the remote control. He presses the first button he sees. Whoosh, a giant bowling ball sails over Luigi and Magic Koopa's head. Huh? Guess the turtle, looking up. A deep voice blares from the TV speakers. It's time for bowling for billions! With all his might, Luigi leaps high into the air. He grabs the top of the TV set and pulls himself out of the opening there. Crash! A ball slams into Magic Koopa. He tumbles to the bottom of the TV like a bowling pin. Strike! The announcer's voice bellows. You win the money! Instantly, hundreds of shiny coins begin to fountain out of the top of the TV set. Yahoo! shouts Luigi. He jumps down to the library floor and begins to gather the money. We're rich! Help! Ack! No more, moans Magic Koopa as a pile of heavy bowling balls cascade down onto him. Tisk tisk, says Mario. He aims the remote control at the set once more and pushes the off button. Balls, pins, and Magic Koopa all vanish as the screen goes black. The plumbers collect 300 coins. That's very exciting. Turn to page 74. The instant the evil magician vanishes, things begin to change. Zip! Luigi soars back to normal size. Zip! Several pebbles that have been lying around in the dusty corners of the library swell rapidly into large granite statues. Then they turn to flesh and blood. A dozen confused dinosaurs stumble out from behind stacks of books and begin to wander out of the door at the far end of the library. I bet Yoshi and Princess Toadstool are snapping over it too, says Mario. Let's get out of this place. Sure enough, when the plumbers make it back out of the castle, they find Yoshi and the princess waiting for them at the edge of the swamp. Hooray, shouts the princess when she spots Mario and Luigi. Brow! Yoshi trumpets joyfully. Exhausted but happy, all four heroes head back to the ship. Look, cries Luigi excitedly. There on the port bow stands Toad and the King, holding a huge tray of fresh baked chocolate chip cookies between them. They seem to have regained their wits. For now, at least. I was really scared, Princess Toadstool confesses as they board the entrance ramp on the big boat. I thought you boys forgot all about us, and we'd have been statues forever. There, there, says Mario, patting her gently on the shoulder. You know we'd never take you for granted. You win! Game over! Yay! That's the end of Flo and the Koopa. That went on for a really long time, and I had to do way more math than I thought I would, but we won! That's what matters.